Welcome to Legal Vices Entertainment. So, just recently, I had the intuitive thought to go into the legal info and just skim through it and actually see what's in there because I'm pretty sure many other beat makers and producers, myself included, don't really bother to skim through all of that legal jargon that's inside of this machine or even inside of the handbooks that they give you. But a few things that I read in there kind of, you know, tipped me off in an intuitive way. Um, I, I came and turned on the machine and I noticed how certain things that comes with the NPC Maybe one day it's working perfectly fine in regards to the sounds and then later on you might not notice that it sounds somewhat distorted. I'm not sure if anybody else has had that issue or certain sounds that you may have purchased may have been perfectly fine or organized into a program that you created. And I just recently come in here and seen that some of my 808s that, are, that were in a program in both folders where the sounds remained there but the programs were completely undone and then for whatever reason certain sounds are perfectly fine while a few others sound a little distorted now what I'm getting at here is that I enjoy this particular beat machine you know I've just recently started using the splice and transferring the files and stuff like that over through the Wi-Fi. The sound quality is a lot better than on the other beat machines and stuff like that that I've made. So I have a lot of good things to say about it. And there's a lot of features on here that I still haven't, you know, really dived into. And even still, not even using the full potential of it, I've made pretty decent strides and, you know, my professional production that I, you know, started up just recently. But what I'm getting at here is that I plan on keeping my MPC 1000 and in the near future sending it off to one of these customizing uh, sites that I've seen on there where they'll customize your beat machine and make it whatever color you like and whatever buttons. And the reason behind that is because it's kind of like when they had cars or tractor trailers that were stick shift versus turning them over to electronics and putting, you know, professional drivers on electronic logs. Like, basically, the bottom line of this video is, is that I feel like they had the ability to, you know, have that quote unquote all seeing eye and have a tad bit more control over producers and beat makers than they should <laughs> and with the MPC 1000 or all of the legacy MPCs they were computers but they didn't have the ability to connect to the internet or anything of the like so whatever sounds or samples or whatever you put in there that was more or less on you they didn't even have USBs you had to have like a compact flash to be able to put sounds on there and then you even even now I have to have like a compact flash reader to connect it to a USB to even put the sounds on there or you can just connect it to the back and into the computer or whatnot but all in all like I said I still enjoy this machine I'm just understanding certain things that, you know, comes along with being in the future and being with all of this new technology. Even when you go to save or load projects, you'll notice that there are certain features each time you upgrade that will come with the NPC, with the new upgrades that you clearly understand that they could have put on there from the get go. Like on the NPC 1000, you can load, save, change the name as many times as you want, move it to a different folder. And it's kind of, you know, ridiculous to think that, you know, a multi-billion dollar company would have forgotten to put 
certain little minor, it seemed yet insignificant, but in the long scheme, if you have to keep taking it out and going to your computer to do certain things, you understand they have the capability and they didn't forget at all, you know, that they came up with the ability to create this type of powerful machine and put it out for countless people throughout the United States and Canada and even around the world to just go on Amazon like I did or even go into a guitar center and purchase it like they had the ability to give you all of these quote unquote gifts and knickknacks and updates they could have put that in the machine from the get go and so that aside like I got a few more albums and stuff like that coming out you know this is my mainstay this is my studio you know I'm going to end up getting some chords and stuff like that um, I've had some stuff recommended from uh, the YouTube user um, I make beats for how I'll be able to connect things into my iPhone or into my tablet and use my Focusrite Scarlet to be able to get better sound quality to all of my viewers and subscribers that are here to, you know, check out any of the new productions and stuff like that. Um, like I said, check out, check out and read through it. You ain't got to read through the whole thing because I didn't, but I read just a few pages. And even though I'm not an attorney and I don't look into legal jargon like that, paying attention to it and being intuitive, you kind of got an idea. And it even mentioned something about rendering certain things useless. But everything that I upload to my distro kid or everything that, um, you know, I put out for a profit. It's all royalty free samples or in the future it'll be samples that I get from Tracklib that are going to be paid for and the credit will be given to whoever is the copyright owner or the publisher of those works. So at this point in my career as a beat maker, like nothing at all that I put out is even going to be questionable. You know, I don't want to deal with those type of problems. You're talking about copyright infringement. I want to make my money the right way because there's money to be made in this. But it's, you know, as much reading and studying and going through books, I have a very rudimentary and basic understanding of what I can do and what I can't do. But I'll be keeping you all up on, you know, any updates and stuff like that. I'm going to get back into making some more beats tonight. I'm getting prepared for 2020. You know, there's a lot coming, you know, for the future in regards to the albums and stuff like that that I'm going to be putting together. And I'll also have the playlist and stuff like that available. If click on there. There should be another album coming out on the 27th. And De La Hiz just recently came out. So I'll be keeping you all posted. Um, I'll also be getting Crown Las Vegas. I'll have that coming out soon. And I'll also... We'll have the tribute to my grand uncle, Mixmaster Mike. Uh, rest in peace to him. I'll have um, my honor and tribute album that I put together for him as well coming out in January. But I'm in there. I appreciate you all for tuning in and, you know, share your thoughts. And if you all have gone through the same thing, because I've been reading through certain NPC forms and I've been seeing certain comments that other beat makers and producers have been leaving in regards to that. I appreciate you all tuning in. Gentlemen.